From Hype Beast Radio, I'm Jeff Staple, and this is The Business of Hype, a show about creative entrepreneurs, brand builders, innovators, and the realities behind the dreams they've built. There are very few people who have the ability to carry an entire city on their back. Every city has that select, unique person, right? If you're in Toronto, you know Drake reigns supreme. If you're in Houston, you can't do anything without the permission of Bun B. And if you're trying to make it in Tokyo, good luck without the blessing of Hiroshi Fujiwara. So now let's talk about Chicago. The great thing about Chicago is that it has so many amazing people in it who have attributed massive amounts to the greater culture. The superstar names we all know. But there's a lesser known unsung hero from the shy that holds it down equally well for all the people. In fact, very uniquely so, I'd argue that there's no one pushing it forward like this man here. But you know what the reality is? This isn't really a story about Chicago. It's about representation. It's about hustle. It's about taking nothing and creating something truly amazing out of it. So get ready as we hear a story about someone who grew up on the West Side to then becoming the face for all of Chicago street culture. And you probably want to check your calendar soon because one of his pop-up shops is probably coming to a city near you. So everyone, welcome to the business of hype, Mr. Joe Fresh Goods. Pleasure to have you in, in New York City, even though you're not from here, but this yes. is like practically your second home now, I feel like. Yes, yeah, so I'm Joe Fresh Goods um, from Chicago, um, owner, a uh, part owner of Fat Tiger Workshop, uh, owner of DBM, Don't Be Mad, my streetwear brand, and um, Joe Fresh Goods, myself. The brand. The, the brand. Man. The man, yeah. When you introduce yourself, you introduce yourself at Joe Fresh Goods now? It gets so weird <laughs> because I, I was at the store, I was at a kid, and uh, I just, you know, I'm like, yo, Joe, I, but I gave him my um, email to to purchase. Yeah. Oh, Joe Fresh Goods. <laughs> I, you know, it's so weird because I, you know, it's, it's just it's a weird thing. But nah, I usually just identify myself as Joe. Okay. And then people are like oh, let people Joe Fresh figure Goods. it out. Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. They see the JFG and they're exactly. like, wait a second. Yeah. So, explain to me what is in the water in Chicago. <laughs> What's going yeah. on in Chicago where like there is just so much heat? It feels like coming out of yeah. that city right now. What's happening over there? You know, I, I think Chicago has often felt left out of certain conversations, you know, for so many great people and stores and brands and designers to come from Chicago. Um, you know, I think for so long, we've been like the little sister to so many different cities. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we start talking about like, you know, facts and where certain things come from and certain influences, um, you know, I'm 32. So. I'm still not a baby in this industry, but I've you know I'm in the middle ground of this you know yeah. how long streetwear been around. But um, Chicago's you know we've had a lot of great stories with stores, a lot of great people come and do great things. So I think right now, thanks to a lot of the creative staying in Chicago, it's been like a spotlight. You know that's why you got things like Complex Con coming to Chicago. Yeah. yeah, I think we're finally starting to get like our just do because. You know, people like me, you know, I, we decided to stay in Chicago. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I get to do my pop-ups around the world, but my home base is Chicago. So it makes people have to come to Chicago to come, you know, get in. Our food is amazing, too. Yeah. <laughs> I stand by, you know, I stand by our food. So I think Chicago is a great city, and now the world is finally seeing that. You know, we're known for the bulls, and we're known for deep dish pizza and, like, hot dogs and stuff. But... Um, we're we're a great city, you yeah. know, with creatives, and I think that's finally starting to you know you're starting to see that a lot. Well, the way the way I see it, and if you look at like global cities in in the whole world that add a lot of contribution to society, yeah. there's certain like ingredients that are always consistent, yeah. and like food, as you mentioned, is definitely one of them. Music is another one, right? Art and fashion, mm-hmm. and once enough of those starts to get put into the pot, yeah. you start to have this city. Yeah. When you grew up, you're born and raised Chicago. Yep, yeah. okay. That? So when did the influences started to really peak from a, from a purely born in Chicago movement? Like, can you remember back in the day, the early thing where you're like, 
I'm so proud to be from Chicago because of X. And I assume yeah. this dude named Michael Jordan might be one of those yeah, people. Yeah, but sure. other than that, I'm sure there was other Chicago-born influences. Yeah, well, this is obviously pre-internet. So some things, you, when you, you know, as far as like city love and like just a love for my city, I didn't really know that I was feeling this way. And I think my first time going to London, um, I was going to Colette and I saw like a, I think it was a babe collaboration mm -hmm. with like Miami, New York, LA. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what a, where's Chicago? Oh, so, so that was one for the me. left out thing is what yeah, made you for, feel inspired. Well, yeah, from a brand point of view, it was just like, I don't see whenever, whenever any, you know, any, you see mm -hmm. the jerseys or see any, any big, even when there's the old Stussy shirts. Right. Then they put just, the cities down, right? You never see Chicago on city t-shirts and we are a major city. So that always made me, you know, yeah. but um, as far as growing up, um, you know, I'm from, like I said, I'm from the west side of Chicago, and I, and I think I could probably compare it, you know, I'm not from Harlem, but just just seeing how people compare different sides of New York and, like, the, the flashiness and the colorful Harlem dudes, and, like, you know, I think for me, um, growing up where I grew up at, um, you know, on the west side, it was always just cool seeing how people shopped, you know, what they shopped for, the colorful outfits. Mm -hmm. um, it was a stretch of area called, on Madison and Pulaski where it was just, like, all the mom and pop retail stores, um, you know, negotiation, negotiating prices. And okay. So just, it's like LES, yeah, like a little lower yeah, side by. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think for that, it was just like my first love of figuring out everything. Just, you know, understanding it's like a Chicago style. I think mm -hmm. introducing the how to shop in, in the hood was like my first intro to like, oh, I get Chicago, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, how did it feel that ComplexCon, as you mentioned, you know, yeah. landed in Chicago this yeah. year. ComplexCon to me really represents like the new age of doing business in fashion and street, right? Like yeah. it used to be the trade shows, magic, yeah. project, that sort of died. Then the street where drops happened and mm -hmm. ComplexCon is almost like the commercialization on a yeah. big scale of that thinking. Yeah. And then for them to pick Chicago as their, you know, before New York, before Miami, before yeah. international, um, a, how did that make you feel? But mm -hmm. then I know they like reached out to, yeah. specifically to you. So talk about yeah. that. Um, it was very exciting. I think for me, um, they definitely checked in with me before they came, you know, just to check, check the temperature. Like, yo, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, like the mayor. Like, yeah, yo. <laughs> you know, they checked in. You know, they checked in. I'm not going to um, take full credit for Compass Con coming to Chicago, but they definitely um, checked in with me and my team just to see how we felt about it. Mm -hmm. How could they, you know, help the community? Because my biggest thing was, Whoever come to Chicago, you just can't, you know, we, we call out bullshit quick. So, you know, you know, I'm excited just from a, a consumer point of view, you mm -hmm. know, just a, um, e com like just e not e-commerce, but just like helping the economy. Out. And also, you know, I never really get to see all of my peers in one time. I never get to see them in Chicago at one time. You right. know? So um, it was pretty um, exciting that they, they decided to come here. And, um, you know, I don't know how. I mean, I talked to some people afterwards. I know it was successful. I don't know what they um, determined success mm -hmm. off of. I did well. <laughs> I, 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 I did good. I did good. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'm very excited it came. I think all of I would, I take that back. I think we as Chicagoans, we did good, you know? Uh -huh. Right. I do, Chicago did yeah, good. Yeah. All the Chicago brands killed it. You know, I think we showed out. Um, because we, again, we we never really get that platform to show uh -huh. like, hey, we some Chicago brands. We in the Midwest in general, you know. I think we are always often forgetting about. So I think it was dope to have all of us under one roof, and um, you know, just to see how much people came out. Now the big brands, I am kind of tight that a lot of the big brands didn't come. You know, mm -hmm. that that made me feel some type of way because it's like again, like you know, I get it. I get, yeah, I get Long Beach is is the, the main show, mm -hmm. but I do wish a lot of the big brands would have contributed to uh, Compass Con, but. I ain't had no competition. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so beyond asking you for like just temperature check, yeah. how, were you involved in ComplexCon, like some of the planning and or anything else behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah. I just gave them a very unbiased list of Chicagoans to work with. Okay. You know, um, you know, I do look at myself like the big brother for a lot of uh, younger designers and brands, and you know, I'm one of the, you know, I, br I pride myself on saying this. So I'm like literally like, you know, how some stores have different beefs and. Don't they don't shop at that store mm -hmm. because they carry? I yeah. literally like Clicks. I'm one of the only sh brand owners that shop at every store. Uh -huh. So I, I have a certain connection with every store and every everybody that other people don't get. So mm -hmm. I can I can talk to that store. Hey, you guys should do Compass Con, you know. So um, 
Right. You're like the peacemaker. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. For sure. You know, I try to spread that positivity among Chicago and like a lot of the brands and stuff. So it was it was dope. I think yeah. every, everybody did well. Every Chicago brand did well. Nice. I could say that for a fact. That's yeah. dope that you do that. That when I was coming up, it was the same. Like yeah. Union versus Stash versus yeah. A Life versus Nord versus yeah. Triple Five. And everyone talks shit. And yeah. me at that time being like the young gun, mm -hmm. I was just trying to like be peace with everyone. Yeah. You know, and not not necessarily be their best friend, but yeah. not be the enemy either. I was just cool with everyone. Yeah, definitely. You know? I think that's a good stance to take. Yeah. He's the mayor, the city's diplomat, the king of the pop-up, purveyor of positivity. Call him what you want, but Joe undoubtedly does things the way he wants to do it, and more importantly, does it for the greater good of Chicago. A lot of people want to rep their cities, neighborhoods, and blocks. We all want to put on from where we come from, and it's probably because we experience the greatness that others don't see in our own hometowns. But eventually, if we do our jobs right, people catch on. Joe has a good challenge when it comes to Chicago. It seems to always be left out in the conversation, despite the fact that time after time, wave after wave, movement after movement, Chicago breaks the mold over and over again, whether it's art, music, fashion, food, or sports. But like in a lot of other cities, there's divisions too, cliques that divide people. Now, these groups influence others with who they want to align with. And in the fashion scene, that means where they want to shop. When looking at the grand scheme of things, there has to be something greater. We've seen it with music, and it's amazing when it happens. New York artists coming together, Atlanta artists creating a movement. It's a boom that further cements those cities on the map and the overall culture. This is why it's amazing to see Joe approach his work with this unbiased mentality. Here's a moment where all eyes in streetwear and sneaker culture will be on his city. Why not recognize that something bigger can happen when everyone is working together? We're in the collaboration age where you don't rise to the top by yourself. Whether your brand collaborates on product or fans just see you positively associated with another brand, it's all a form of currency. Joe has created a brand and platform that celebrates that community. You could argue that distinct regional styles might be dying out because of the internet. But I think, in actuality, that same internet is allowing people to have greater pride in even the tiniest pockets in the world. That community allows for strength. And these days, you don't need strength in numbers. You need strength in connectivity. So I went to your website. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that stands out, of course, is this quote that yeah. is in real big words. Yeah. And would you mind reading that in your own voice? I just want yeah. to hear it. I have it written yeah. here. If you I, want. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, um, all, it's in all caps there. Yes. So. Yes. Because it's, it's all caps on the website. <laughs> um, I'm crazy. I'm all over the place. I randomly collab with friends. I release clothes when I feel like it. I have no structure. I hate structure. I have a store. It's called Fat Tiger. I have a few brands. This is my personal site for all things creative. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. Thank and you. I love that, um, you know, most people, most brands and companies, they put the about us like mm -hmm. all the way down on the website yeah. in like five point font. And then yeah. it's like an afterthought. You were like, the, about me is going to be the first thing, the yeah. biggest thing. And it's going to be um, not traditionally what an about me would yeah, be. Tell, tell me the thinking around this. <laughs> Man, so uh, when it, I mean, we can we can have a whole podcast about legal problems because that's okay. a whole different thing. Why I had to switch over, like, uh, I, I so I technically, I technically can't go by Joe Fresh Goods anymore. What? Yeah, that's a whole different thing when we talk about legal. But that's that's kind of the read. You are Joe Fresh. What do you mean? Everyone calls you that. You're yeah, still and I don't even know if I could talk about this. But yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> just know it's it's a it's a company called Joe Fresh. Yes, you heard. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, going Joe Fresh is like fast fashion, right? Yeah, man. You know, y'all probably hate me saying this, but yeah. Um, so I had to just rebrand, rebrand the website, mm -hmm. um, and that whole thing was really just about me not knowing. And you know, I I think since I do have a store, I do have a brand, but then I am a brand, but then I collab with people, uh -huh. and then I like, you know. So I think 
since my name been ringing more and more, I yeah. wanted to have a website where just hey, it, it, everything is laid out for you. Okay. You see, you see everything I've done the last two three years. Um, I randomly collab with friends. I release clothes when I feel like it. That's like, cause I was I got caught in this world like you know two three years ago. I was trying to fit in. Like let me, let me try to hit these deadlines for seasons. Let me try to right. do wholesale. Right. Let me try and it's just like. I thought about it. I was like, you know what? This is just me. You know, I don't. I'm not a know-it-all. Um, mm-hmm. I know how I want my brand to be ran. I know that it is companies and people like Joe Fresh Goods. Let's let's go on his website and you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for me, it's just like I wanted to bow. Just put that right there. Yeah. It's like you know, it's there. You know. So it's pretty much a portfolio that I'm you know segueing or start releasing my product on that site. You know? Yeah, but. Normally, if you're trying to work and collaborate with different brands, even yeah. multi-million or billion-dollar brands, yeah. the first thing you usually say is not "I'm crazy." Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's usually not the thing to get well, yeah. them to sign off. Definitely. But you did I'm that crazy. on purpose. Yeah, because I am. You know, <laughs> you I, you really are. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> you know, because I think for me, it's just always doing things that's not normal. You mm-hmm. know, and, and it, it gets it's tough for the older I get. You know, like I said, I. You know, I've been do, make, doing and making clothes since I was 14, so now I have a little bit more responsibility with my crazy. But when I say I'm crazy, I more so mean like, you know, if a company give me a pitch deck and it's just like, hey, Joe, we want to have you involved in this because, and I know what it is. Most of the time, I'm black, I have a store, I'm positive, you know. It's like Virgil and Don cost so much, so let me just holler at Joe. So I get what's going on right now, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't like for companies to try to use me for, for mm-hmm. you know, as I'm coming up right it's now. For, so, the, for the token check off, yeah, like, yo, we're good on the... Yeah, on nah, the. so I'm just, I'm crazy. <laughs> I, I say all of that. You know, I, I always want people to know we live in an age of collaboration right now, which mm-hmm. is, you know, it's, you know, it's a thing, but uh, I'm crazy because I... I I, I say what I want to say. Right. And I, you won't play by their rules. I don't. I don't. You know, everything so it's that kind I, of like a, a disclaimer. Just yeah, like, that's all. Hey, be careful. That's all. I'm crazy, <laughs> Before man. you jump in this yeah, water. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty dope. Um, you say uh, you have no structure, and I know you probably wrote that a little bit ago, but now yeah. with all the success that you've had and like team and stuff, yeah. there's got to be some structure at this point, right? Or, is, or are I mean, you I still trying? I'm, well, I'm, I am... You know, when people ask me, what do you see yourself in five, six years? I kind of get offended when people ask me that <laughs> because I don't know. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not, and that's okay. I think the last 10 years of me, me becoming an adult and just, you know, um, I, don't, I don't really plan, you know. I just, um, I mean, I do have a child and a family mm-hmm. and a business, so I, I do plan. Yeah. But when it comes to, like, just, you know, figuring out, you know, my beef with wholesale and just, like, I don't know where I want to be at. I mean, mm-hmm. I do. I'm just saying structurally, I'm still learning as I go. And, and you I don't t- want to be concrete about yeah. it, right? Like, yeah. And you I want it to be set in stone. Yeah, no, nah, right? that's for sure. So I, I think it's to me, I, I still wake up loving what I do because every day is still like, oh, this is new. You know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. getting those emails like, hey, we want to work with you. And it's like, I didn't even know that was possible. And so it, it's hard. I'm not a planner. You know, it's, it's tough for me to just plan out my four or five year calendar and then we come to structure just I know you know I'm, I'm smart when it comes to like okay I, I did this pop-up shop and now I'm gonna wait two weeks and then I'm gonna drop it online and then I'm gonna take that and you know so I do plan for that type of structure yeah. but when it comes to like just like <laughs> business picture, stuff no right. you know I'm doing a pop-up in New York I want to do it on this date I want to bring my team out I want to pick this venue I want you know it's yeah to me nowadays it's just becoming natural so it's like it's not really like Right, a structure, a plan to just like let's there's a up. skill in like organizing the the things that have to be planned, but yeah. allowing chaos. Yeah, and that. I like you know now finally I have like a manager and have an assistant, so they 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 realize how crazy I am, but they kind of like help manage my crazy. Like a lot of these, finally, finally, a lot of these collaborations and these companies I deal with, I don't even talk to them no more. Mm. I mean, I get the initial email mm-hmm. that comes to me and. The DM or whatever, but after it gets that, I give it on to yeah. somebody on my Project team, and then they just like they handle that. So that's yeah. How big is the whole team now? It's not that big, you know. So, um, so you know, when it comes to my store, it's so it's so weird to even describe how we do business because so Fat Tiger is my brick and mortar in Chicago. Okay, and how I try to tell people, you gotta look at Fat Tiger like um like a label or like a barber shop, and <laughs> each brand cut its own heads. If you get what I'm saying, so okay. like. Me and my best friend Arello. Okay, guys, I, I see the analogy. Yeah, like so the different chairs. You have right, different brands. Exactly. So okay. we don't pick up any brands. We, um, you know, we created Fat Tiger Workshop six years ago, um, with the intent to do workshops. I think now 
it's a thing now because we know we, we if we notice some retail dying, and 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 like the department store is like losing its touch. A lot of brands is like once you get that shoe in, that Travis Scott Jordan one, yeah. and then it's like you be dead for like a week after that. You know, <laughs> right. a lot of the smaller boutiques or whatever. So I think now everybody's introducing experiences in that store. Uh-huh. Um, we wanted to do that six seven years ago, but mm-hmm. with me it's like. I'm not about to start picking up brands because I didn't have enough money to start picking up brands. Okay. I knew that I had a popping brand in Chicago and that I can probably pay my little rent just off my brand. Mm-hmm. So, but I wasn't, I didn't want to call it the DBM store or the Joe mm-hmm. Fresh Goods store. Mm-hmm. So Fat Tiger Workshop was a way for us to all to work together. Um, a lot of my guys from my other store that I worked at Leaders, we all just teamed up and like opened up our own store with our own brand. Mm-hmm. And then... You know, this is my third store in five years because we keep growing fast. Yeah. Um, so the, for, when I first, when we first did, opened up the shop, we um, had to, when we did work, so we did workshops to um, talk about taxes, talk about streetwear 101 from uh-huh. my point of view. So we're just like, besides us selling clothes, I just feel so uncomfortable just selling stuff to people. So right. I always wanted to kind of give back to the community. So you but still now, do those workshops? Yeah, yeah. So um I gotta get you on one of them. Now that we're right. friends now. But um <laughs> yeah, so now I have a store, a big store in Chicago where we have our retail space open mm-hmm. and we have a um a whole room that's dedicated to just doing workshops and oh, pop-up cool. shops. So it's just like a, a little incubator room and we you know we was on it. I just didn't we didn't have enough money to like really do a crazy million dollar build out. But yeah. the reason why we called it Fat Tech Workshop was because it sounded weird, mm-hmm. you know, and just to do workshops for the community and bring people in town and all that stuff. Joe is unapologetically Joe. He says crazy, but it's all with good intent. He's not someone you're going to collaborate with just to check off the cool diversity box. He sees right through that BS, and he'll also let his design collaborator know that too. He's never afraid to speak his mind, and he continuously works toward doing something different. What may have started out as an organic on-the-go pop-up has turned into a structure on how to plan, roll out, and lock down collections and social projects. He's turned this into a great store that serves a purpose versus just pushing you product. Joe doesn't give himself enough credit here because if he really wanted to, I honestly feel like he could write a manual or how-to guide on doing this. There's a reason why it's intuitive and natural for him. It comes as second nature. Now, I know during my experiences of releasing capsule collections, doing pop-ups, and running a store, The art of the sale was so very important. Sometimes the word sales begets a dirty reputation. But if you cannot sell your own product, creation, or idea, you're going to have a very hard time convincing others to do it for you. After all, you're going to need to sell the idea to someone of selling your brand, right? I learned that from the first year that I started Staple. I hated selling. I was just way too emotionally connected to the brand to do sales and have people tell me that they didn't like a particular design. So I knew I needed to get help. But guess what? I had to sell to that person that this was the right brand to be working for. So all in all, never forget that sales is pretty much everything. And you said this is the third expansion because you kept outgrowing the old yeah. ones? Yeah, so we started off in Logan Square, which is like in, um, uh, in uh, northwest of Chicago. Small store, $800 a month. Um, really small, had a really beautiful backyard. So it was like, the, you know, I, I'm so cool with everybody in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So we were just like the kicking spot. We yeah. that store, like the cool like store. Like the barbershop. Yeah, yeah, the cool store. We sold our brands. Um, we all grew that really fast mm-hmm. within a year. So we opened up in a better part of the city. Um, Do you remember the second store's rent? Yeah, so we went from um, $800 a month, which seems scary, uh, <laughs> $800 a month for a year. We jumped over to $1,400 a month in a better neighborhood, and now- That was probably real scary. It's real scary, but then we, uh, we all grew that, and the basement was nasty, whatever. <laughs> now we have a new store. Don't really want to say the rent, but it's uh, twice or three times more. <laughs> so it's just kind of cool to be able- And we have it's struggles. You know, I'm never- I don't want to sit on here and just always talk about success. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it is tough. You know, because with me loving the pop-up formula, sometimes I wish I can be like, damn, I wish I could just close my store and just open up when I feel like. It, you right. know, so right. it's tough. But we definitely, um, I'm excited that we've been able to um, grow the business like you know really fast. Yeah. You know? So yeah. yeah. Before, take me back to before that first store opened. Yeah. And you were like 
looking for store locations, considering if you can do this eight hundred dollars yeah. a month thing. Yeah. What were you doing? How were you making money back then? Um, man. Um, so I, I know the moment. I know the aha moment for me was um, I have a, a, a homie that owns a, a tattoo shop in Chicago, Great Lakes Tattoo, and he has like a little event space in the bottom. Mm-hmm. And um, I did like a little T-shirt release in Chicago, and. Um, I know two days I made like eleven grand. And I know that sounds like chump change now, but um, no, it's not. Seven two, years ago, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a lot to a lot of people. Seven years ago, I, you know, just eleven grand off my brand, which was just t shirt at the tattoo shop. Yeah, the basement okay. of a tattoo shop. Wow. And eleven grand had, had everybody come out. Um, you know, two day store, and it was just like I kept getting so much love, and I was just like, this is crazy. I think I might be ready for a store. So. Um, start looking for locations and you know once you start doing the math like I think everybody that start doing this is like they look at $800 a month like that's like four t-shirts a day <laughs> that's how everybody always yeah. do the, the shirt math for like which you know, is wrong yeah it's so wrong <laughs> when you're adding bills and right. payroll, payroll and, and yeah. all that stuff And but um, yeah it was just like I was like I think Chicago was ready you know I was uh-huh. Um, what was I actually doing? I might have been selling weed, um, which I'm not like a drug dealer. Just, but like, just trying to get You're not by. a good drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, nah. Just wait. Did you have a full time job? Was the last like um, nine to five you had? Damn. Oh, I, you know what? Yes, I was. Um, that's why all these collaborations are so funny now. I was like a brand ambassador for Adidas. So basically, okay. I was the person that goes to different malls uh-huh. and just check accounts. Like, hey, how to derail? Okay, like a street rep. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I was doing that, and I was still in hours because I wasn't really doing the thing, and just you know throwing parties. So it was just being one of the cool it guys in Chicago mm-hmm. that just made clothes when I felt like it. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So, but I realized that I was doing small pop ups every now and then. Like the pop up forum for me always been my thing. Uh-huh. Um, but like I think, just drop in. Yeah, before before then. Oh, and I had like I had like big drops. I think I <laughs> did like a karma loop. Yeah, I'm tripping. There's so much that I'm forgetting. Yeah, yeah, that's why this we was do the this. Time, this was the time that I came up with the hat. It was a beanie that I came up with. I, I want to I, I fuck Rihanna. It sounds so trash now. In this, <laughs> this world we live in Oftentimes now. Oftentimes you look back on your designs oh, and you go, oh my God, it's so naive. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm tripping. I don't, I don't, I'm not acting like I was struggling. I was like, um, yeah, I, I, I was doing really well. If I remember, yeah, I did like a, a beanie. This was a play off the Calm Day, calm day Fucks Down hat whatever but i did a, a beanie a black and white beanie mm-hmm. um i want to fuck rihanna i don't uh-huh. that sounds so trashy now damn but it was like wow back it was back it was like one of the first like it's like when bootleg when from streetwear bootleg was like about to be yeah. in um isn't it crazy like pre me too it's like yeah like you could never do that right yes now. oh my god that's <laughs> like why even I, I got a new shirt it. now it's that like... says i respect rihanna like i just really said the pop up um but yeah, so I, that that boomed. That like you, boomed. That was paper, real yeah, paper. Yeah, that for boomed. You. Well, because I got my first, I got in my first stores. That's when I loved wholesale. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I'm tripping. I'm forgetting about a whole point before that. So before I opened up a store, I was in like, man, I was in probably like maybe 24 stores. Yeah, selling like the Rihanna thing and other things. Other stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I was no no sales rep. No, nothing. I just had brand boom, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and I, I used to like. You were on Karma Loop, you said. Yeah, Karma Loop. You know, placed a, and it was so crazy because that was like, that's when Karma Loop was about like kind of corny, you know. So I was kind of <laughs> like, let's check like ten grand, man. They placed like a ten thousand dollar PO for me, uh-huh. and I was like twenty four. Yeah. Um, I was like, and nobody knew. That's what thing about it. It was just like I was on Karma Loop. Uh-huh. I thought I was gonna get like hate, but nobody. I got the check. It came. They loved Silence. the hats. Like, yeah. Silence. So. But um yeah, so I was getting little checks. I, you know, I got I got like a little. I bought like a little uh, crib in Pil- in the area in Chicago, Pilsen. So I I turned my garage into a um a uh, little store. Mm-hmm. What? So yeah, yeah. So now I'm, I'm forgetting about that. Wait, you bought a house? Not a, no, I'm tripping. It, my, my, I was renting, but I was renting a house, a okay, three okay. bedroom house. I was okay. renting, um, and uh, I turned the garage into like a warehouse. Uh-huh. So every time any rapper would come to Chicago, they would come you by my spot. So yeah, so. I was doing pretty good. I mean, it wasn't balling, but I was like, I was, um, I was a 24, 25 year old man, mm-hmm. you know, making T-shirts and making clothes and doing well in Chicago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So right. that's, you know, I wasn't balling, but at that point, I, w- I think it was, I would do drops and I would like have people come to my house and pick stuff up, but mm-hmm. I just realized that probably wasn't the right thing to do. Was know? this all what you're describing now yeah. before the tattoo shop drop? Yeah, so I'm tripping. Okay. I'm skipping over time. Gotcha. So, Just yeah, get in the yeah, chronology. Right? So, so you had all that going, yeah. and then you did the tattoo shop drop, which 
prompted yeah, that was the you most to money know, I made in like right, two days off a of right. brand. Yeah. Then you're yeah. like, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready exactly. for a store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you plunked down on that eight hundred dollar. Yeah, it was just a. It was it, it. We all grew that. It was a small store. It was in like a, I mean, Logan Square is popping now, and as far as the area in Chicago, but um, yeah, we just if we can do that and we start looking at the numbers and keep in mind that wasn't even on my online business, mm -hmm. which was doing pretty good. We just knew that we wanted a better area in Chicago. So yeah, we moved up. I know you came up through the leaders. Yes. Retail pedigree, yes, right? Yes, yes. Talk about the importance of leaders to Chicago. Yeah, I mean, just honestly, even when we want to talk about just being a black man having a store paying all these. You know, you know, and, and employees, and it just—I mm -hmm. think now, you know, when everything was happening, I didn't realize what I was actually seeing as far as like uh, what I was being taught. You know, yeah. as far as like just from a retail point of view. But um, you know, now you have you know R RSVP, Notre Shop, and you have a lot of other stores in Chicago that's that's kind of you know popping up. Oh, that's been, you know they've been around for a while. I'm tripping, but yeah. this was the first. That's yeah. all. Um, when it comes to streetwear and cool T-shirt, the hottest sneakers. Um, Leaders was the first in Chicago that was doing all that before anybody. So um, that's how I got my intro to streetwear, I would say, honestly. To even work at Leaders, though, you yeah. probably already had an interest, right? Yeah. So honestly, my uncle, which he's, you know, he changed everything. He came home. Well, he was at Thanksgiving with a cool Monopoly t-shirt that had like rhinestones and <laughs> something and mm -hmm. um, asked him where he got that shirt from. And he's at a store called Leaders and that kind of changed. Really? Everything. Do you know I who made Googling. that Monopoly shirt? I don't know. I got to ask my homie. I, I, I forgot what brand that was, but it that was back. sounds like a familiar streetwear shirt. Yeah, it was like so gaudy and like <laughs> from the time, but it was just like a Monopoly board with rhinestone, and I just saw it. I like I've never saw anything like that, and it just um, I actually got to tell my story correctly because I don't want nobody from Chicago to check me. Like you forgot about that. <laughs> I actually started working for a brand in Chicago called Fashion Geek. Uh, which is like a legendary brand in Chicago. So I went. I worked at Fashion Geek. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I won't say Chicago is separate, but like being a West Sider, I wasn't really. It's like North Side, mm. West Side, uh, South East. You know, kind of separate. Yeah. You know, I'm not a kid. It's different in New York. I feel like if you want to go shop, you can. You know, you can be from where you're from and like take the bus to yeah. Manhattan and. It's not like that in Chicago. If I'm on the west side, I'm pretty much going to stay on the west side. Oh, you know? yeah? Okay. South side, you're not really traveling for, you know, for, for clothes and sneakers uh -huh. like that. Okay. So um, I, I wasn't, a, a, Leaders was on the south side, so I wasn't from there. So, um, yeah, I started working at Fashion Geek, and, and um, that was like a thing. When she, Fashion Geek was really popping in Chicago, so that was like that. And then I just became a, a, the, one of the it dudes. I started working at Nike Town, and, you know, I was using my discount to become everybody's friend, so I let the Air Force... <laughs> That's back in that bubble where the Air Force Ones was like all the, the Kiwi and the Invisible Air Force One. And I worked at Nike Town during that time, so yeah. I was like hooking everybody up. So right. I just used all that to cloud up and then um, <laughs> ended up yeah working at Leaders, and that's the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you did a little stint at Nike Town as well. Yeah, and it's so crazy. Now I got my face in front. I did like a it's – it's, it's so crazy. Everybody that I worked for and got fired from, I ended up working with. Did actually. you get fired from Leaders? Yes, I did. Did you get fired from Nike Town? Yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah, using my discount too much. Yeah. Next, <laughs> okay. Seven years later, I did a, a campaign when Nike football, and my face is on there. Everybody, I, literally every place I got fired from, I ended up collabing with. That's afterwards. amazing. Yeah, so yes. how'd you get fired from leaders? Um. Well, he was downsizing. You know, it was during the recession and shit. So I'm not really gonna, you know, because again, now that I'm now that I'm kind of in uh -huh. his shoes right. and I have employees, I'm like. I don't know how he was able to pay um, so many people, but he downsized stores, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and honestly, because now, now that I'm a brand owner, I hate when somebody come in, like I interview like, and this is for people that's interview. if you come to me and you want a job, I get that you're starting a brand, but don't just spend an hour talking about your brand because <laughs> I'm still trying to grow my shit. Yeah. So I, honestly, I was just... You know, I was selling. So you were my, trying to grow your brand while I was working for him. While I was working for his brand, so I get it. I'm not. We 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 cool now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my biggest mentor. I, I call him when I have any problems. But I was simply. He probably couldn't afford us. You know, he had like me and my partner. Right. It's and convenient. Then, um, it was a yeah, convenient yeah, departure. Yeah. You know, and I was selling my own brand outside. Right. I was like, yo, you would come in and buy some leader stuff, and I was like, yo, you want my DBM T-shirt? So out of curiosity, why couldn't yeah. DBM just sell out of leaders? We we did that. Um, you you know like he he used to he used to have a saying you're not a real brand until you're paying taxes and mm -hmm. you're not a real brand until you're doing this so he just like you know he he he's told me stuff that I was just like you, why are you being an old <laughs> hater man just like take it so I think now right. he probably maybe a little regretted a little bit I know mm -hmm. he, he gonna listen to this and be like but I love you Corey Gilkey you, you know you helped it a lot <laughs> um, but yeah I just it just didn't work out and I wasn't ready I wasn't 
I didn't understand. Like I had stores, but it mm-hmm. was just simply me getting hats made. You know, store like, hey, we want you know fifty hats made and right. t-shirts, and I would just make it and then ship it. I didn't really understand the wholesale business. Yeah. I didn't understand what I was doing. So we probably could have figured it out, but mm-hmm. I'm glad I didn't. I wouldn't have opened up my own thing if I was still in exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like everything happened for a reason. But that's really good advice that you said about people who interview. Yeah. I get so many interviews yeah. with people, and they're like, "Yo, so I was like, so what are you what are you up to? What are you doing? I'm starting yeah. my own brand. Yeah. I'm like." Then why do you want to work yeah. for another and I brand? I get it. I get it because everybody have intentions, but you got to know how to talk. And yeah. then you got to be about me, you know, mm-hmm. because we all still growing. So um, I get it. Now I get was just I, I get where he was coming from. A lot of stuff that I'm a little bit older. To everyone out there still working on their come up, this is big facts. Please recognize the situation when speaking with others about helping their brand or company out. Listen, we all want what we're personally working on to grow and do well. I get it. And if you're sitting down with someone to help them out, nine times out of 10, I'm sure the last thing they want to hear is how excited you are about your own thing. Conceptually, there is nothing wrong with this. And that's probably how 99% of the brands out there got their start. But there is a time and place for everything, and you have to understand the nuances of when that time is right. Joe just didn't walk into the world of apparel. DBM and Fat Tiger Workshop didn't just fall into his lap. He experienced what it takes to run a retail space. Also, the rise and fall of different industry shapers and the hustle to grow his brand. So don't take his words of advice lightly here. A great entrepreneur knows the different levels of opportunities. One that can pay off in sales growth, another can pay off in exposure. Sometimes they're related and sometimes they're separated, but these opportunities will come. This reminds me back to my past Business of Hype conversation with Luke Tadashi of Bristol Studios. He said, there's a time and a place when you're trying to get your brand put on. And he had an organic conversation with Adidas based purely on him tagging them and them liking how he styled their product. That's it. He didn't jump on this opportunity and instantly start talking about a collaboration. But that casual conversation slowly did lead to that outcome. So patience is a virtue. Building your brand isn't just about knowing what a great idea is. It's also about knowing the hows and the whens. That's what ultimately separates dreams from reality. Did I read somewhere your roommate is trash hand? Yeah, so it were. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's I mean, so dope. it's so many different stories. So after that, um, no, before the three bedroom house mm-hmm. thing that I got, yeah. me and trash, we had a, um, a storefront house. Um, in Pilsen, so basically it was on a street level house. Yeah, it was a it was a storefront in the front, and um, and for those who don't know, room. Trash Hand is like yeah. one of the illest photographers yes. in the world. Yes. You should yes. follow him. Yeah, shout Trash out to Trash. Hand. So, man, we just we changed everything, and that was a that was a pivotal moment in my life too, because that was my first technical store. So before I had the the, the house, I had a storefront. Um, you know, I didn't. I opened up on the weekends. I was weekends only. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was, like again. I. The, the logic of me inviting people to my house and putting my, my address to the, on the internet is just insane yeah. now. But um, <laughs> yeah, me and Trash lived together for about a year. It was a, the, the most amazing year ever. We shot, I still think that you can look at my, my lookbooks. Mm-hmm. I think me and him dropped the craziest lookbooks of all time. Mm-hmm. I still stand on that five years later. But yeah, it was a moment in time. It was back when the Instagram bubble. So he yeah. was understanding Instagram. He was like, yo, look, I got 500,000. I got 200,000 followers. So he was like, and I'm like, look, I got this person wearing a brand. So it was just like everybody used to come over. Chance yeah. used to come over. Like everybody that's a creative in Chicago used to come over our house and just get their picture taken. And just like it was a vibe in Chicago for a good year. It was nice. a good year. Yeah. Do you guys still keep in touch? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 We just, oh, we, we just, we grown now, man, with businesses and like contract signings. And so every time we see each other, <laughs> it's just so, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, you know, but I love Trash to Death. And we just, we just grown now, man. So we just realized all the crazy shit he was doing back in the day but yeah yeah, yeah still my word you my two together i mean like for those there's not too many people who have met trash and or know his face because yeah. he wants to keep it on the yes. down low yeah. but you two together is like y'all should have a tv show yeah no seriously we just like, like you're like opposites 100 percent. and that's why we, we don't talk every day so i'm not even trying to say that but like we just saw i can't even imagine you two living yeah, no nah, seriously it's so <laughs> weird we we judge each other like literally but one of my really good friends um we like i said he 
he changed my life from a showing my brand point of view. Like I, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made Hype Beast, you know, because mm-hmm. literally like he was so popping with his feel and he was like shooting my lookbook. People were like, we were literally going to Paris just to shoot lookbooks, you know, literally like tr- trash. If you listen to this, like I really appreciate you sending me $1,200. You paid for my trip to Paris. Like I love you to forever for that. But um, yeah, we just shot lookbooks yeah. and he's, he's an amazing person. And like, I remember he had a relationship with the Hype Beast people. So he uh, was like, cause I, I don't, you know, I, I stay in my lane, man. I don't really get that much love from a blog point of view. So mm-hmm. now I don't, I used to get mad, but now it's like, I got a land outside. Like nobody posted it. I had a, did a Yankees collab, but it's still sold out. So, but back then me making Hype Beast, I was like, I almost cracked running around the house and it was cause of trash. He's sent yeah. it to us. So yeah, I love him forever, man. He's a dope, dope. person. Why, why the obsession with t-shirts? I mean, I'm obsessed yeah. with t-shirts too, yeah. but I want to know your, why. Yeah, because people, I mean, cut and sew is all cap, man. It's just like people want to, I've, I've seen so many brands, you know, I'm going to hit you with these mag- magical zippers. I'm going to with this this suede and whatever. And just like, for me, it's like, we all have to wear a t-shirt. You mm-hmm. know, if you, all you other brands are going to make, you know, $700 t-shirts and this, this and that, it has to be a lane for somebody that makes cool, cause my, my logic on shirts is very, is like, you know, if it's school, if it's work, if it's a train, it's like it's a walking billboard, you know? So I like to focus on one of those things that people not focusing on. And Word. Because I always get that ask all the time, too. Like you, you, you've been in the game for a long time. And I do, I push cut and sew sometimes, mm-hmm. but, like, I, I just love T-shirts, man. The art, the art of a shirt, it's like my canvas. It's like, yeah. it's the way I'm able to tell my story, you know, via what you wear. So I just, you know, and I used to really beat myself up on... You know, I need to get in cut and sew because all my peers are doing cut and sew. Right. But like, nah, the price there is points. pressure to do cut and sew. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. It's just like you're not a real person that you're doing cut and sew. I remember sew. my first year after doing yeah. T-shirts, the stores immediately were like, "Yo, when are you gonna do like yeah. a hoodie, jeans?" I'm yeah. like, "Damn, yeah. I don't so, even want to." <laughs> yeah, and it's like you know, the blanks are getting better as, as far as companies, and like again, I think it's a way to introduce it very slowly. But I'm pretty sure we've all watched brands, you know, that. Went, went cut and sew, and then it's like they're not around no more, you know, because yeah. you know, so or not accessible anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's tough, man. I just want to kind of you know do this, stay in my lane. Word. I mean, I like the t-shirt too. I think you're saying the same thing, but like, it, there's something utilitarian and, and level setting about the t-shirt. Yeah. Like where, yeah, if you fly to Milan and pick up the best zippers in the world, yeah. of course your shirt's dope. But yeah. Sort of everyone designing on a t-shirt is like everyone's got to drop their weapons yeah. for this fight. Exactly, like, we're just going fist to cuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. I just love it. It's a canvas for me. Yeah, I I read a quote that you said clothes is art defined by the times. Yes, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more? Well, it's tough now because I used to pride myself on doing things of the right now, but mm-hmm. I think that that technically means fast fashion when you really think about it. But for me, it's just like I think some of my hottest t-shirts have been like and. It, I think everybody kind of moved past it now, but like it was a point in time culturally where it was like, oh, this person passed away. I hope Joe make a shirt about it. Um, <laughs> you oh, were like a barometer. For yeah, the for real. For like, I, I call myself like the hood CNN. It was like anything that happened culturally, I would like, you know, because I'm really tight with my manufacturers in Chicago. Like mm-hmm. I, I've, I, I've spent good money with them. Like I, I really put a lot of people on or whatever. So I'm able to come up with an idea on Sunday. Um, have it done by Monday and have it out to the streets by Tuesday. So I think that was like my thing for a long time. Yeah. Um, the so, speed, yeah. Yeah, the, the speed, you know, fast fashion is just such a nasty ass word, yep. you know what I'm saying? But I, what I was doing, I was just trying to show people how fast I can move. Now it's like a thing. Now sure. it's like a thing. Like my first line for a t-shirt was uh, when Kanye announced that he was like running for president. Yep. Yeah, like for MTV Awards. It was something wacky. Um, which that shirt did not age well at all. <laughs> I see people wearing it in my pop-up, like it Yo, says Kanye stop. 2020. Um, but yeah, I made that shirt. Um, made that shirt. and uh, I like that take on fast fashion. Yeah, yeah. I, it, not, not like Zara and like, right, it's just right. like, man, it's just like, yo, so this happened on Tuesday, like, let's put it out. But like, if it's my fuck Donald Trump t-shirts, if it's the, um, the Kanye t, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't do it now because I don't really, like, I leave that up for the younger generation to do, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm not trying to be that fast, man, you know what I'm saying? That was like back in the day, but... Um, it was just cool to just, oh, that's going on. Because it's like, I love when, I want people that wear my stuff to, stuff to be the cool guy at work. Like, oh my God, I want you to kill the lunchroom. Right. Like when you wear my, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I was trying to make stuff for that person, that mm-hmm. girl, that guy to like, yo, where did you get that from? And like have a conversation started. So It's so funny how the, the progression is very similar like yeah. for, for me too. Like yeah. in the beginning, it was all riff shirts, yeah. logo bites, yeah. commentary on current events. But yeah. then for some reason after a while, 
you want to start flexing, I guess, as a yeah. designer, and yeah. you want to show. Maybe it's more about longevity and yeah. legacy yeah. than yeah. like news of the week. Yeah, you know, that, maybe and then that's people what start to expect it too much. Like it's always something that's happened. So yeah. you can't reach. You can't get everything. You know. Right. So and they, they start treating you like um, almost like a comedian. Like yo, what's the joke? Come on, tell us exactly. the one line. So after a while, it'd be like stuff that happened. Like yo, Joe, we hope you make a shirt. It's like yo, what? chill out. I'm on the beach and <laughs> my family in Jamaica. Man, right, I don't right. want to make a shirt about. Yeah. Why I hate R. Kelly. He's a, he's a sicko, but I'm, I don't, I'm not about to make that shirt. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah. Um, one thing that you mentioned just now, which is key to me, is manufacturing. Yeah. And probably one of the most asked questions I get from young people trying to get in is, mm -hmm. how the fuck do I find like a reliable manufacturer? How do I even approach them? Yeah. You know, and, I mean, back when I started, it was like literally the yellow pages. Yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't understand like how... Um, people find it so difficult. It's just, mm -hmm. I think it's all about trial and error. Like, yeah, for sure. You probably went through tons yeah. of printers before you found the one that you netted sure. out on. Yeah. But what is some of your tips on A, how to find it, but, but then B, like cultivate the relationship with your manufacturer? Yeah, it's all about relationships. I tell people all the time, and I, it, gets, it, it gets hard because I don't want to come off like an asshole when I get all these DMs and emails about how to get started, but mm -hmm. it's a trial and error. Like if, if you don't take L's in what you do, you know, the W's are not going to happen, you know? So for, I yeah. think... It's you. You gotta. You gotta take those trips to LA. You gotta. If you. If you're blessed and fortunate to go overseas, to like you know, because it. It is. You do see these Ali. I call them the Alibaba brands. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just like you know, they need the base sweatpants so they you know get the you know. So, but I think. Did you dabble in Alibaba? No, not really. I haven't. I mean, because I. I really just focus on like tees and like. Uh -huh. You know, I think I got some basketball mates. I ain't gonna front. You know, it's it's <laughs> good. I'm not gonna front on it, but it's just like um. You can some you can tell when brands actually don't care about mm -hmm. certain things, but the whole trial and everything. I think that's the main reason why I'm still here because, um, you know, it. You know, if it's if it's getting samples back that don't work, if you you might spend a thousand dollars on like some samples, yeah, that just you can't get right. So it's L's like that. It's right. L's like you know. But again, it's manufacturer like me and my my t-shirt printer. We grew together, so. I was going to them when they was like printing two guys printing their basement. Now they have a huge ass factory in Chicago. So now I'm able to, yo, I need this done. That. I need this. I know y'all hate me to death. But I need this done in an hour. And <laughs> they take care of me because, like, you know, so it's all about relationships. Yeah. You can't, you can't be a boss ass dude giving your printer thirty six shirts and be like, yo, Bob, you can't, you know, like, you gotta give grow some with money. them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might, you know, like, you know, you gotta work for terms. You know, mm -hmm. you can't go in there and be like, no, nah, I have to like now I have terms, but. You know, I have to pay my bill for three years in a row before I can get like able where I don't have to pay right away. So, right. Um, word, that's yeah, good advice. You know? Yeah, you just gotta. You, all about relationships. You gotta work hard. Know that you gotta take L's. If you're not taking no L's, when those W stop, you're gonna be confused because you never dealt with adversity. You know, so yeah. I think um, it's all about relationships and you know just making sure you you know some stuff not gonna work. Yeah, I remember when I started out. And you know, you try to ask people who their printers are, yeah. and it was like the most secretive thing. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. "Why are people being so secret about yeah, this?" But yeah. now I know why. Yeah. There's only 40 hours in a week, yeah. and if he's printing your shit, yeah. and then fucking you yeah. know Walmart calls, your shit ain't getting printed anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Man. exactly. <laughs> That's the unfortunate thing, you yeah. know. Let's talk about the L's here for a second. They are way more important than you think. And just don't take the losses. Take that time to learn from them. Take whatever opportunity you can to learn and then adapt from there. If being successful were easy, then everyone would be doing it. It's cliche to say, but it's definitely true. My friend and previous guest on the show, Levi Maestro, used to say, the only thing easy about success is the thought of it. There's no surefire way to perfection. When it comes to things that are an exact science, like manufacturing, don't forget that you're also dealing with human beings and not everyone responds in the same way. Like what Joe said, this is an industry of relationships and how you cultivate them is a clear indicator on whether your brand lives or dies. Think of the list of things you need to lock down before even releasing any product. Materials, trims, graphics, samples, packaging, shipping, customer service, and so on and so on. There are a number of different vendors and partners and people that you're going to talk to each step of the way. But you don't know who will do it to your standard until you research, test, and fail. The more L's you're able to take, the closer you will get to perfection. 
something that is, by the way, impossible to achieve. I'm not saying to strive for the L's here, always look forward to the W's, but it is what you can take away from the L's that is the most critical thing you can do. Uh, you are now doing this model where you're getting out of your hometown by doing pop-ups in various cities. So yeah. name off some of the cities that you've now done pop-ups in. Oh, let's see here. New Orleans, which I love. Um, Atlanta, uh, LA, New York, um, Houston, um, London, Japan. Damn. Might be forgetting some. Do, 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 do. Might be forgetting some. And, and, and if I haven't hit a city yet, it's because I... I'm not structured right enough to like, you know, I think <laughs> that's pretty damn good. though. Yeah, but no, definitely. And I try to, I think for me, you know, the, the whole wholesale model, I realize, you know, I, I try not to diss wholesale because I have some really good friends that own brands that they, that the wholesale model is they thing. So mm -hmm. I try to make sure that I don't be like, you know, wholesale is the devil, whatever. But for me, it's like even this pop up in New York, I'm so fucking tired, but for three days, um, I shook everybody hand. Word. I probably took, a thousand pictures, um, signed, you know, a thousand bottles. Um, I get to touch people, you know? Yeah. And I think for me, it's not that many people that look like me, come from where I come from, um, that still operate my brand how I run my brand. There's so many people that was like, yo, oh, you actually here? Mm -hmm. Of course I'm here. Like, what else am I going to do? So, <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> yeah, it's my job. You know, I still love it. So it is tiring and I, you know, I, this might be the last year where I might have to be at my store like this, you know? But I think overall... Um, I just love that model. I get to see, you know, for me, and it's just simple math, you know. I don't know a store in New York, and LA, and DC, Atlanta that's, I can do a pop up shop. And it's, again, life is not all about money, but we all have to survive and, you know, mm -hmm. stuff is, you know. But a store is not going to place a $10,000 PO, you know. I can, I mean, it depends on your price points in there. I make yeah. teas and stuff. So my whole thing is just pop up just makes sense. I, I mm -hmm. go to like a, um, you know, I'm give up, give up all the game now, but I go to like a storefront.com or peerspace.com. Yeah. It's not a pay ad, by the way. Um, <laughs> Should be. Uh, right? <laughs> yep. Collab, Airbnb. I want to do a collab with all you guys. But um, I just found a storefront. Sometimes I'm not able to find a, it's mm -hmm. smaller cities that don't really have that many like artist uh -huh. spaces. I, you know, I usually partner with the store, but yeah. um, I usually find a space, you know, um, bring my crew up, make a, a, a city t-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, and... and and touch the city. It's all yeah. about touching that city. Right. I go to cities like New Orleans. They are. They be like, "Yo, it's brands forget about us." Mm -hmm. So you come up. You come here. You're you're like the only the brand hero. to come here. You're yeah. the hero, and they they always remember that. So right. literally, I feel like I'm Forrest Gump. I just touch people everywhere I go, <laughs> and like I'm to me, I have the whole one fan a day philosophy. You know. So oh, me too. People just feel like you know, like I I speak for them. So mm -hmm. I you know I wish, I, and I'm gearing to. I'm doing a lot of big programs in the next, you know, six months where I'm going to try to hit like 14 cities in like 12 days, you know, but um, the pop-up formula just works. I think for me, I don't want to come up with a product, um, have a store, see that product, place an order for that product. It's in a shelf. And then, you know, I cringe. I don't want to see my stuff on sale without me putting it on sale. Right. I'm not, I, I don't want to go, like, if I'm going to put it on sale, it's because I put it on sale. I don't want to go on the rack at Kiff and see my shirt you know marked down because it's, you know they didn't fly out so yeah. but let's talk about the real pros and cons of doing yes pop-ups versus yes. wholesale yeah for so sure. you talked about all the pros of doing pop-ups and yes. direct to retail definitely what are some of the cons and vice versa the pros of doing wholesale hypothetically if you did wholesale yeah i mean you probably I, it would be cool <laughs> to be on a shelf next to certain brands okay so you know presence yeah presence i yep. think for me i keep i i I'm building on people that always support me. Yeah. You know, I think being in wholesale, you're getting new people. Because right. if you got my brand next to a popping brand, mm -hmm. then the person that's shopping that and that never heard about yeah. me is like, oh, what is this? Right. You know, well, so. Well, what you just said about the one of the dopest things is you get to touch every fan yeah. that you're out there. Yeah. The the flip side of that, you go to sleep, yeah. you're not touching fans anymore. Yeah. Whereas if you did wholesale, yeah. You're just constantly yeah. quasi touching fans. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, it just depends on what's your end goal, I think. You know, because yeah. sometimes a lot of the guys, what they're doing now is 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 is, is creating these sub brands with these like lesser brands that's mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah, diffusion brands, as yeah, they call and it. I, yeah. You know, I you know, I've got approached by Urban. I, I'm not and I love all you guys, but Urban, Zoomies, Pac Sun, mm -hmm. Foot Locker, Finish Line, 
foot action. Everybody's mm-hmm. knocking Every on my door. Store. Everybody you can think of to do it to do a subline for their story. Subline or wholesale. I just it, you, I don't you know I I I make a killing at these pop ups. You know, right. and for me it's just like at this point what I'm doing as a black man with a black brand. I don't really think it's that many people that's like. That's still in the streets. I'm not like one of those guys that have a brand that's like driving my Lambo up the hills and like, who are these peasants wearing my brand? I'm so, no, I still right. be outside. I'm like, I'm all walking and shopping down New York and getting love. So I think it's equity in how I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be a slower grind, I think, it's, you know, but I. But you're you know, owning everything. You're yeah, not exactly. Dependent. Yes, yeah. exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then my, you know, again, I'm making people come to Chicago. I'm become, Chicago's like a destination point. Oh, let me go, let me stop by Notre, let me stop by San Alfred, let me stop by Leaders, but let me stop by Joe Store. Mm-hmm. You know, so that, and then online business, it's like, eat, it, that's on fire too. So it's just mm-hmm. like, honestly, it's just, you know, it, you know, I drop stuff really when I feel like it. Just, it really just depends on how much you're trying to make and how fast you're trying to like, because, Nobody's not gonna be hot forever. It's tough, you know. Yeah. And I, I just don't want to give, again, not shit on Urban Outfitters because I love them too. But I don't want to give Urban Outfitters the chance to put my T-shirts on, on sale for nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. You know, and they I, do it quick, so quick. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so it's just, for me, it's just like I'm gonna control my own narrative for now right. until I have to do that. But right now, I'm just gonna control my own thing. You yeah. Know? When you do a pop up, how do you gauge or how do you know how much stuff to bring and That's make? So tough. Okay. Is there, still did you tough. figure it out? No. No, I mean, even now, I think I brought up. I had so you know what's crazy about pop up shops? I've watched myself grow. So, my first pop up shops, like maybe five, six years ago, I used to like just get an extra check bag and like just pack t shirts in the bag, you know, and then like you know, yeah, three so years ago, the inventory ago, would fit in the second yeah, piece of luggage, exactly. Okay. <laughs> you know, so three years ago, I would just ship eight boxes to New York, go to like a UPS over here and and pick them up. But now I had to hire a host, I got to get a semi truck, so I had like maybe like 98. Boxes of clothes, like drove drove from Chicago to New York, and that's wow. just cool because like now I can like damn I can I can pay a delivery service to like you know so um, it's still tough because I rather you know I love selling out you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying but at the same time I didn't want to bring I'm not gonna have a three day pop up and like hey guys everything sold out in the first day you know what I'm saying so yeah that's tough because you tough. don't want to disappoint oh, people no nah, because these Yankees hats like you know I don't care about selling numbers I tell all my business I only made two hundred hats and I'm pissed off because it's just like. You could have made two thousand. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't do that because that's a big number. But like, at least I was the hats were sold out like in two seconds at the store. <laughs> yeah, but like at least give me a whole full day of hats. You but know? on the flip side, yeah. you also don't want to be shipping ninety cases back to exactly. Chicago. Like so. I said, I, I, I sh- about ninety five boxes came to New York. Mm-hmm. About thirty going back. So uh-huh. I think that's still good because I still yeah. need stuff to put online. So, right. You know. So yeah, it's, it's still trying to figure out that formula of, of you know. But yeah. it depends on each market. Like if I'm going to Houston. Well, New Orleans, I'm not bringing 98 boxes, mm-hmm, right. you know, but so it just depends. Like some stuff I know without a doubt is going to sell, so I, I'll sh- send more of those, but it just depends on each city. Yeah. yeah. Were you so well-traveled before you started the brand and the business? Um, or did this really open up the world to you? Um, I mean, with, during the leader stages, I was the kid in Agenda and Magic, all like wet behind the ears, like, oh my God, that's Jeff Staple. Oh my God, that's, <laughs> you know, like... Oh my God, that's a guy from LRG. Like, I was that person. So mm-hmm. I was just like in awe, taking notes on everybody, like mm-hmm. um, seeing the booths that had the long line, seeing the booth that's getting the crazy wholesale orders, seeing what brands are doing well in leaders. So I always, I was paying for my own ticket to go out there. I was sleeping on big people floors and shit really? like that. But um, I think, you know, you know the time when Magic and Agenda was like the shit. Yep, popping. I was like taking notes. I was like, you know, 19, 20, like. Mm-hmm. At agenda, like you know, what I'm saying at magic, like just taking notes on everything. So yeah. I wasn't, you know, fully immersed in everything, and like I wasn't like a world traveler. But I think, but um, you know, I think it was an early time my my like early childhood, not early childhood, but like older adult, yeah. you know, just going to New York, kicking it with the New York kids, mm-hmm. going to L.A., like you know, just being mixy with the friends and the right. homies, whatever, like that. So just being naturally out here. I mean, I'm a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like one of those things where it's just like a lot of the homies just kind of up now, like, you know, Anwar and like. You know, very out like we, you know, kind of known a lot of people for a while. Yeah, so it's, right. you know, it's, it's not new friends. Yeah, no, nah, it's not new friends. <laughs> not like you know, we all cool with each other. You right. Know? So yeah. But then how about like going out to like Tokyo and like Paris? That's Verdi. That's thanks to Verdi. You know, he's uh, amazing. Um, actually, Anwar set that up, and a lot, a couple of other homies, you know, made that possible. And uh-huh. um, but um, yeah, is it bugged out just to see like people from all over the world fucking with you? Like, yeah. Globally? Well, I'm not gonna stunt, man. <laughs> Why? That dude Verdi is amazing because I watched him have three different pop ups in one day and just like have a long line in Japan. So yes, that it was Verdi's like the Tokyo version of you. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Seriously, man. But um, yeah, it was super cool because like I saw 
you know, one of the life changes, one of the most biggest things I saw last year, which is like, wow, like, what's going on? Some kid in Japan had on, um, like, you know, Chance hoes, Chance, I love Chance to death. Me and him, like, a lot of our stories go hand in hand as yeah. far as how I came up and, you know, whatever. But I saw a kid in Japan wearing a Chance hat, um, wearing my T-shirt and wearing some old sweatpants I made, like, four years ago. And I was like, yo, he couldn't speak English, but huge fan. I was right. like, wow. I know these these other 100 people might be lined up because they see me doing some of Verdi. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very right. aware of my range. Yeah, like, yeah. I, <laughs> Your I might range have a few <laughs> fans in Japan, but, like, it was a few people that was wearing my stuff. I was like, wow, you know? So right. it's, it's definitely like... Like, you since day one. Yeah. You're a day one Yeah, cat. for sure. For That's sure. Dope. For sure. It must be crazy, though, just to, like, all the way from Chicago going yeah. to these different... Because even... Me to this day, like when I go to a city that I've yeah. never been to and there's fans, I'm just like, how? Yeah. Like, I get the internet, I understand yeah. obviously, but I'm still mind blown. Like, yeah. how the, what? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's crazy, man, but it's a blessing, you know, yeah. just to, you know, people being happy that you're in different cities, like being able to, I don't like to appropriate and like pull up and put some whack stuff on a shirt. I, I really try to, I take pride in my city t shirts that mm-hmm. I do, making sure I show love, making sure I take care of the people in the city that, Need to get the clothes first, and you know, you know. So I, I try to make sure I pull up and show love. I, you know, I be out. My, my motto is I be outside. You know, mm-hmm. I, I really be outside with the people that live in these cities. You know, so. Wholesale versus direct to consumer. It's an ongoing debate, not only on business of hype, but throughout the industry. You go to any blog, publication, or outlet covering this world, and I'm positive they've covered it sometime this year. Joe adds a different element to the direct-to-consumer argument. He's not out here acting like a digital first venture. He does it because it allows him to be more local. It's such a unique approach to grassroots marketing. It's a trend we're seeing more of now, whether it's streetwear, music, or even food. While there are pros and cons for both ways of distributing product, you can't deny the way Joe is able to connect with the people. You want to talk about direct-to-consumer, That's getting direct and talking face-to-face with them. And again, all on his own terms. This takes me back to a simpler time where we would go to drops to meet people and fans, which would eventually start entire communities. Joe is still pushing that same sentiment forward. But not only in Chicago, he's doing it all over the planet. All right, let's change gears a little bit. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about like um, some of the more corporate business work that you do. Um, and it's it's interesting because, and I'm not like placing judgment, but yeah. you have a you have a strong principle about not selling to the man yeah. in the mall. Let's go. Yeah. But you are working with them yeah. on the other hand yeah. in some other ways, and yeah. I want to talk about some of those things. So. I mean, just reel it and off, like yeah. Jagermeister, Snapple, yeah. Yeah. MasterCard, McDonald's, right? Yeah. Yeah. How do you juggle between like people, critics saying like you're selling out, yeah. or is there even such a thing as selling out nowadays? It's, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the art of finesse is what it's called. Okay. I think me, I think people look at me like, damn, how, you, how, did, sneak, how, did, how did a brother do this, you know? Honestly, you know, for me, it's just like, nah, it's it's all a narrative, it's man. It's like some world star shit. Yeah, like, nah, it's like, what? damn, MasterCard, what the fuck? <laughs> McDonald's? Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, because I'm still me, and I still ain't, I haven't changed to my friends and family, and I, I I think, you know, I do have one thing I want to do in 10 years, is actually talk about these partnerships, because I am starting to get criticized. I, I, I see some comments, some of my peers that don't understand my, you know, Master, I mean, like, McDonald's show, like, you know, and just like, most of these people that criticize me, if they was in my position, would have did it too, you know? Yeah. And that's what's crazy. So I try not to think about that type of thing. But, you know, everything that I said yes to, imagine all the companies that I said no to. Mm-hmm. That's what, to me, and I can't, I don't want to diss brands or companies that I turn <laughs> right. down, but like, right. if if it's something that I'm doing, they really gave me what I want, either that's from a dollar sign point of view, or just, yo, I like, I, I want C- you to, creative freedom. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, you know, even with McDonald's, like, a couple of my peers were like, McDonald's, Joe, damn, it's like, they're killing us. It's just like, whatever, man. It's like, ooh, everything is killing us, man. I'm smoking, you know, weed right now. It's killing right. me. You know, with, with the back, you know, so my biggest thing is just like, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like checking my resume off, you know, because mm-hmm. I do feel, sometimes I feel slighted, like, it's just like, why don't I be, like, why don't these, and again, not that I care, but it's just like, I still feel like the sheep, like, I, I don't feel like I'm in, I mentioned, like, when I got the, 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 the email to be on here, I'm like, me? I don't, 
You know, <laughs> I listen to the show, but like, I I just don't think I'm one of those people that usually get mentioned. And it, it sucks, man, because now it's like, oh, damn, I'm becoming that. I'm about to be in that Illuminati. I'm about to be in that, that club, to, yeah. man. I'm like, damn, man. This, but, this is actually the initiation. Right. Yeah, Look I, at this wall yeah. get open up and then Hiroshi's like, going to be back there. Right? Oh, my God. That's hilarious, actually. <laughs> no, true story. When we reached out to you to do this interview, yeah. we had already booked the date and everything. Yeah. Other editors at the same time yeah. were like, yo, we need to get Joe Fresh Goods on yeah. the show. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, and I was like, no, we already have a book yeah. in there. So that's crazy. It's, it's happening, man. Get yeah. ready. No, but um, <laughs> you know, like a McDonald's, man, they, these companies listen to me. It's been a lot of things mm-hmm. I turned down because it morally didn't align. But, you know, like a McDonald's, working with an agency, you know, they're working with the brand. Yeah. I made them pick like the McDonald's that's like in a, you know, like the lower property areas. Like uh-huh. we made, we picked like good areas, like sort of in a close to free, right. you know? So that was a situation where um, I did 20 pop-up shops around the world, around the U.S. So we picked New York, four locations in New York, four locations in L.A., mm-hmm. Atlanta, Chicago. Um, so I was like, yo, I know I'm getting better and bigger, but yeah. like, could I have people lined up outside of McDonald's for clothes? Mm-hmm. I looked around. I haven't seen nobody do it before. Right. Maybe I'm tripping, you know? Um, and I did. Yeah. So I used that collaboration for me. It's just like, can I do it? You know? Right. Could I, you know? There's, and, a, there's a difference between, not sorry to cut you off, yeah. but like between selling out, but you infiltrating yeah. yourself into facts, the system, yeah, right? Facts. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really what I did with that. Just like, I wanted to prove to myself that I can have, I mean, I almost It's not crap. like you're like holding up a burger. Like yeah, no, <laughs> of course not. I have people lined up outside of McDonald's for free clothes that's like tight to me you know what i'm saying if you don't right. get the you're hacking the system yeah and that's and that's and that's i think that's why people treat me like when it comes to selling out because again i'll be at the bars i'm literally i'll be really chilling with people mm-hmm. not saying that like uh, people don't chill with people like i'm really like a man of the people like i really like i show love to everybody like i'm so super humble so you know when i do certain things it's just like yo i'm i'm about to bring a, i'm about to bring you know these guys over here you know what i'm saying i'm just yeah. I'm really just like infiltrating, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And, and companies, and I get my power within my community, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So now I think it changes like every few months for me. Now I can like, you know, those old collaborations, I probably had to, you know, do things for not the check, but like now I can walk in the room. If, if, if you give me a pitch deck about what you want to do with me, I'm 100% probably going to give you something different, how it's going to be better. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? So now I can Because do you're that. crazy. Yeah, because I'm crazy, <laughs> you know? So um, it's different. Like, it's like MasterCard. Uh, you know, let me see if I can have people lined up at Fred Seagull. So everything is just like, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it just it just works, man. Like with Snapple, it's just like, who the fuck else can have people? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just like you you working with somebody that's like from the culture, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I still keep it authentic, you know what right. I'm saying? I, I don't want companies to take advantage of that. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very wary of who I work with yeah. and making sure I just don't give up my sauce because I don't want to be like played out. Because, right. you know, I see some collaborations like, yo, why they collab with like that? You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Some stuff it don't make no sense, but I try to make everything make sense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, Snapple's but, perfect because it's made from the freshest stuff on earth. Come on now, it's just like come perfect, on, now. yeah. Like, you know, um, th- this is a very timely story because right now there's the whole thing happening with Jay and the NFL. Yeah, and I want to get your viewpoint on it because yeah. many people are. There's two sides of the story. One is like, yo, Jay, you're a fucking sellout. You're right. just sucking the dick of the man, right? Yeah. But on the other hand, it's like, yo. Look at what Jay's taken us through yeah. for the last three decades. Yeah. He's in there. He's in the system right now, and he's going to do good from within. Yeah. What's your take? You know, I appreciate you asking me this because I don't get, people don't ask me stuff like this because this can get me canceled. If I said the wrong things, I appreciate you. I, like, I hate when things are just so easy. But, um, you know, man, my, my, my thing is we, we have to watch. You know, we have to, okay. we have to, um, let time pass a little mm-hmm, bit because mm-hmm. we don't know what the deal is. Yeah, I do think it's a little weird that uh, how it was announced, the press conference, the way the press conference was laid out. Uh-huh. I think somebody somewhere with the NFL or Rock Nation dropped the ball on the announcement. On the launching of it. Yeah, the yeah. launching was just like trash because they didn't do a good <clears throat> job explaining like, mm. what are we looking at? Like, why is Roger and Jay-Z sitting down at a table mm-hmm. with people talking about you know so right, right. they didn't the they optics didn't, were yeah. bad and someone oh, should have said yeah hey maybe people will question this. yeah nobody sure. i don't that. think yeah. i don't think nobody on their side thought that this was gonna be a thing but i mean you know it i i, I just think i do agree with jay in the sense of it's a lot of people that's talkers you know mm-hmm. you know and i think sometimes we do have to you know 
I I identify with people that just do it. You know, yeah. sometimes you might get you might get criticized um, while it's happening. You mm-hmm. know, but after the fact, what happens after that is like the tell all about what you tried to do. So I think we got to just watch and see. You know, obviously, I think the NFL, um, you know sucks in a lot of practices mm-hmm. that you know but so you know what's crazy i gotta watch my words they just invited me to the packers game <laughs> which i can't even, you know the nfl just invited well me i think i think you're, you're like, right at the very least yeah. both from nfl and jay-z yeah. we have to at the very least give it time just give it time let's, right. see, let's see let's see before i mean because jay ain't really let us down so far when it comes to like social no. like you know like you know things that he done so just like I, I you know me let's put rap to the side as far as like me being a jay-z fan yeah. like Let's let's figure out what's going on before we like tell that man that he's like a coon. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know, right. like I want to let's see what's going on first before we, before we figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before we like judge whatever. So I, you know, but the internet man, we you know that's I found myself like deleting old tweets and you know because <laughs> you just got to be careful because we we're in a very sensitive time. So you know you do got to be mindful of what's going on with the community and like a lot yeah. of the different organizations. Just make sure you you on your your your, your p's and q's, but um. I just think it's, we, it's a lot of talkers, man. It's a lot of online, um, yeah. um, you know, keyboard activists that's not really doing anything. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So we can't criticize somebody. Let, let that man. I mean, I, I'm not saying I identify though, but like, let me let's, let let. When I'm finessing the company, I can't talk to. I can't tell the world how I'm finessing the company. Mm-hmm. Just let me. Yo, I got this. Yeah, let me. Just let me. Watch. Let me finesse it because yeah. now a lot of these brands working with me. You know, I'm I'm, I'm doing a collabor- uh, the collaboration with Snapple. It's amazing. I'm, I'm outside smoking weed. Like I'm still being myself. Mm-hmm. I'm giving people that look like me an opportunity. Now it's like we trust another. We can we 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 work with another black a black kid a, a black yeah. girl a black boy because we've seen it work. You know. Right, right. I'm just trying to make it seem. You got to sometimes just let stuff happen. Yeah. You know what I mean. So just gotta let it let it let it happen and see what happened before we start to criticize yeah. it and judge. You know. I love all the keyboard activist things. Yeah, like, man. Just like come on, man. I, I love the people that are like ready to cut Jay's head off, but yeah. then they're like, "Yo, order them wings for the next Sunday game." Like. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're you still know, supporting. That's all. You know, wearing the jerseys. You know, <laughs> right, watching but, the game, fantasy. You know, you you know. So yeah, it's a thing, man. So I just right. you know, people just sensitive. We have to see how things play out before we criticize. Whether you agree with Joe or not, those are sound words. We don't know the full story behind Jay's intention yet, nor do we know the full intention of Joe's when he was doing the collaborations that he was being called a sellout for. If you're trying to finesse, change, or overthrow an industry, you can't show the moves ahead of time. In order to change a system, sometimes we have to go inside the system. And while you're doing it, the intentions may be in the right place, but it also might look like a sellout move at face value. And the core of the idea is probably just not obvious for people on the outside to see. Still have doubt? Ask yourself this. If it's coming from a good, clear place and your vision and purpose are crystal clear, then trust that what you're doing is righteous and true. That validation has never, ever done me wrong. Okay, let's, let's talk on that subject. Let's talk about race a little bit. Yeah. Right. You mentioned, you know, being a black owned business and, mm-hmm. and being supportive of, of all that is is race. And I want to use this word very carefully. When I say racism, mm-hmm. I don't mean like traditionally known racism is very easy to identify and stomp out. Yeah. But is race the ism of race, the ISM of race? Is it a thing in fashion today? Uh, great question. Are we colorblind? Is it all Virgil's at Louis? Are we all good now? Is it all rainbows now? Are we all equal? Man, because I, I, I want to watch my words very Why? wise. You allowed? No, you well, allowed to have an opinion on it's, this? It's 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 uh, you know like <laughs> you know it's certain people you know certain brands that like because even if you're like a black brand or whatever mm-hmm. like you, you don't come from the same struggles that some people come from. So I think for me it's just like. You know, I used to get like, why would you say that? But like, when when kids, it's a New York thing too. So many people for the past three, four years of me doing pop ups in New York, so many kids from all over, like, yo, Joe, you know, you're like my Black Supreme. And at first, mm. I used to kind of get on my nerves, like, eh, what you, what do you, what do you mean? You know, but you know, it's just like what they, what what a lot of people tell me is, it's just like you being in Chicago, you coming from where you come from. 
You mm. being how you look, you sitting on, you know, you doing a, a Nike ad with your do rag on, you like doing interviews, smoking weed, like, but you're like working with Mastercard, like you're working with these brands. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh wow, finally, 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 it's a brand that talked for me. We we never seen that before, and mm-hmm. I think when you really start to get into who own these brands, even a lot, it's a lot of money being put behind brands that you that you think is like you know he's the token black guy, but he don't really own the brand, you know. Right. It's a lot of that goes on and stuff. So I don't want to point any fingers or like you know say that he doesn't really own that brand. Or he doesn't that up, mm-hmm. but people really know I actually own my brand. I'm actually an actual black man that comes from a black community that does my thing. So that's like a thing, but I I, I don't know. You know, I do think. It, it, it's tough. It's really tough because I, I think sometimes, you know, for me, um, when I'm in these rooms with different people, I don't really see people that look like me. You know, even with trade shows, even with trade shows, like, mm-hmm. you know, you know the key figures. We all know the key figures, you know, but for a, for a culture that, not, I mean, it's a hip hop thing, but for, when I look around at all, like, fashion and a lot of stuff that's going on right now, I see a lot of stuff that's influenced by my mm-hmm. community, mm-hmm. but I don't Absolutely. see a lot of people that looks like me working. Uh-huh. You know, working in I, positions of yeah, power. Yeah, it might just be people like that look like me that works the booth. You know, mm-hmm. but like when we actually talk about the people that run the brand, that's like in that that thing. It's yeah. not really. It's like every brand has that cool black guy that work for them. But I'm just speaking, and I don't want to. I don't want to downgrade anybody's. Progress, yeah, and I don't want to yeah. make this a color a colorism thing where it's just like, well, he's not a real black guy, so he don't count. <laughs> I don't want. I'm gonna make sure I don't do that. But like, I'm real, man. And it's just like sometimes I don't really. I walk all these trade shows and I've been doing it for years and I was just like, you know, I know, I know, you know, I know 10D. I know it's a lot of brands that are black owned, but I'm just talking about like right now, like really black owned with no like rich parents. You know, we all hear the stories about where that guy came from. Like that guy has rich parents or this guy won a settlement and, you know, that guy has an investor. Like, you know, it's a lot of people that don't have access to that, you know? So yeah. it's just like, I do think it's, um, you don't do enough of, in my, I mean, just to, from what I've seen, you yeah. don't do enough. I guess, for lack of a better word, bragging yeah. about that aspect of your upbringing. Um, because it's, 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 you know, I don't want to, you know, because I, because I'm, I'm not, you know, I hate, you know, I hate when people get big and uh-huh. they, they say, "Y'all grew up poor." I didn't grow up poor. Yeah. My, my mom and dad middle class, so we, I just didn't not, I had to fight for everything though. Mm-hmm. Like literally, the last three four years, when my mom was like, "Oh, you you can't," I got a I got a more mural of myself in Chicago like right now, and I have like. You know, like billboards and stuff like this. Now my parents understand what. I, oh, you we get it, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Nothing was handed to me, you know. Yeah. And I just, um, I, I see, I see who a lot of these people champion, and and I know their backgrounds, and like a lot of these stores come from money, and like a lot of these brands, you you was grandfathered. A lot of people were grandfathered in, you yeah, know. I know. Um, and I wasn't, you know. So I just sometimes I think, and again, this is me speaking, and it's just me polling people, because again. Me doing pop up shots, I get to talk to people, and it's just mm-hmm. like everybody say like, "Yo, Joe," even like New Orleans, like, "Bro, nobody comes from here. Never, nobody comes here." So, I just, you know, what I'm getting just from travel, all my travels is just like people just want somebody. People appreciate that I'm winning. Yeah, you know, it's like, wow, finally, um, a dude like me, a dude like me, and if right. and whatever type of dude like me I am, it's mm-hmm. just like finally a regular black dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know what that means, but right. it's like. I don't have no association to like, I mean, again, I'm cool with Chance. I'm cool with a lot of rappers and I, uh, a rapper didn't put me on. Um, I mean, I don't want to say certain things like I'm dissing other people, but. Yeah, these are facts of your upbringing. That, facts, yeah. you know, so right. just like, you know, so yeah, you know, it is definitely, I wish certain things were different. I wish I want to see more of my people that look like me in bigger, you know, bigger rooms of power, you know right. what I'm saying? But it is, it is, you know, it is. It, you know, a lot of people like me not in those rooms of power. You know, yeah. we work at the stores, we yeah. work the booth. You know what I'm saying? But when we talk talking about the heads, the big heads, you don't see people like me. It's always like, mm. you know, we, we we the cool people. That's the models or some shit like that. You yeah, we're not really like, you know. You know, uh, I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I have in my notes. You could eat, you could even see this to yeah. prove it. But when I was doing my research on you, right, yeah. I saw a lot of parallels to what you were doing and what Ronnie from Kith was doing in terms of coming up through retail. Yeah having their own brand, then opening their own retail stores. But then as I heard your story, it's not the same. Yeah, because you about to offend me. I'm joking. No, but, but, no. No, but I, I did not ask you the question <laughs> because it's not apples to apples. Yeah. And it's based off yeah. of the last thing that we just spoke about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
because people because people say that all the time because I, I I get that comparison and I don't know if he even knows me or whatever that that yeah but like you know like I I didn't you know like I I didn't grow up I, I don't I don't have rich family members like I you well before know, we even go, it's not yeah, even about him yeah yeah, yeah I'm yeah, just saying yeah. I was about to compare you two yeah. but it's not a comparison yeah, is all I'm sure. saying yeah for sure you know, for and, sure. It, it, it would be wrong to sort of say like yeah. y'all are the same yeah. and no because he's one of the hardest people for sure hardest working people for sure. ever for sure. period hands down for sure yeah 100%. so I'm not disrespecting yeah, or no. taking away from him no, but I've gotten that before just off how the upbringing and like retail and, and everything but just like man not and not saying even if you come for money or you 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 was able to get blessed and grandfathered from working at a store or whatever like man I got fired from everywhere <laughs> like I I, <laughs> I, got, I can get fired from places and I like I, I get like Sued and cease and desist and and, and <laughs> right. you know like you know uh, it's tough man like I you know I, I did this out of necessity I, I did this because I needed to make a little money like it was for, for real me selling t shirts in high school is because I really wanted just like money for like food and shit like this for as far as like outside money from what my parents were giving me mm -hmm. you know so it's just like it just you know everything that's why it's a slow grind yeah. I'm I'm really I'm so afraid to like partner with one of these big stores and get this big old PO and just be like. I'm popping now because mm -hmm. it's like I, I love the slow grind. I just want to. For me, it's like you know, I, I'm like I'm like one of those underground rappers that like yeah. everybody know. You know, <laughs> right, I, right, right. I love that than just getting this big thing because yeah. I don't want to. You know, I don't or wanna, just getting the advance check. Yeah, and then, like, nah, man. Let me just get this slow grind you know, to the top and whatever. Like but yeah, 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 exactly for no reason. And, <laughs> right. And ten chains and shit. You know so, what I'm saying? What is the difference maker now? You've been it's yeah. six years or seven years of what uh, your okay. business? Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Officially, yes. Yeah. Officially, yes. Six years, no investment. No. No drug money that you're very, no. yeah, no, no, so like no outside, you don't have like some Garmento pouring no, in money no. into it's like been, a, and it's been a lot of that too. Don't offer, man, oh right? my god, yeah. yes, there's a lot of people that's like you know, that knock on we'll the door, handle your yeah, I mean, from drug dealers, from you know, <laughs> oh, uh, last year's been a, 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 some man, like a god damn, after the Obama, you know, the Obama collection changed my life, mm -hmm. that's that's what did it for me, you yeah. know, dropping that collection, but. Um, you know, some guy flew me in town. I forgot what, I don't want to put his business out there, but like, just trying to, you know, you know, not start looking at numbers. It's just like, you know, take, I'm going to give me this number and then take 40% of my business. And I was like, yo, give me an office in New York. It's just like, I'm straight, bro. I'm cool. Whoa. You know, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah, none so of what that. Is, so what is the difference maker? You, you say hard work, yeah, but there's got to be some other secret recipe. There's got to be something else. Besides hard work, because I'll tell you right now, there's a hundred thousand yeah. kids saying in their head, yeah. I work hard too. Right. And that's relative. Yeah, Nobody knows sure. how hard you and I work. Yeah, for sure. But beyond the hard work and just putting in hours, yeah. what's another, well, what's a secret? Because well, unfortunately, this is, and I think this is something that creatives deal with, you know, even from like a mental health point of view, I'm never satisfied. Mm. I'm never satisfied, bro. I think that's... Um, I, I just killed New York. I'm like, I could have did better. Like, I got to come back. I should have came back for Fashion Week. I should have had more hats. <laughs> right. I think that, you know, I take mm -hmm. my vacations. I love my, my, my family. I love my daughter. That keeps me like That's dope. sane, but I'm crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, and I wish, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's going to be that moment where it's like that I made it moment. Like, I keep getting smaller doses of like, yo, I'm about to be on, I'm about to meet Jeff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that I made it moment, but I'm never really satisfied. So yeah. I think for me, it's just like. Have you, do you, have you defined the I made it moment? No. Is there an I made it number? No, not even. Wow. No, not even. I, I, I don't know. You know, like I. I so just, that's a great. And, that's but it's great scary thing. though. That's super scary. Right, because then when like, do you turn off? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I mean, I, I know I want to have a, some coffee shops in the next few years. Like. Uh, no store, like I, you know, even like at Compass Con, like I've been a big fan of Colette. Like my booth at Compass Con, Sarah from Colette. So the only store I wanted to be in before, I, like, like I always like eh, anti wholesale. We have to like you know, but uh -huh. like Sarah from Colette just do 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 do. Walked past my booth was a little line. She came by. I did some. I did some bootleg Converse. She loved everything. That was just like so. That was like a moment. A moment for me. That was word, a big moment for me because it's like she didn't. She knew who I was, but mm -hmm. just like. Yo, like this is cool. She came. I I, I have five different booths at Compass Con. I show her all the booths and with me and my homies. And oh, she, you took her on a nice little tour. Yeah, wow. You know, nobody knew who, who was this white lady that Joe walked yeah. with. Nobody yeah. knew, but <laughs> that was a moment for me. And then it was like back to work. You know, and even mm -hmm. Mary Comey came by the booth, got one of my arm brothers. So it's like you know certain moments, but like you know, I, yeah. I'm unfortunately you know I'm not not saying I'm sad. 
I'm just like business mm-hmm. wise. I want to. I'm always trying to top yeah. myself, you know. So, yeah. and a lot of other people would have taken that moment with Murakami or Sarah, and yeah. they go on vacation for a year. Oh no, that's man. like that'll be no. on the cover of their website. Yeah, exactly. the last post on their Instagram, yeah. and they're on vacation. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it be, yeah, yeah, it, hard work is very relative, but just like for me, it just I'm never satisfied, and I. I really know with all my heart that nobody is doing it how I'm doing it that that like like me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like from just like again, I'm really big on you know, like not to keep making this a race thing cuz everybody supports me, you know, but the black and brown boy and girl really need somebody to speak for them in mm-hmm. fashion, you know what I'm saying? And I try to tell my story, even the corner stores my gift shop. A lot of people were like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, you know, it's a bodega in New York, whatever. You know, but people call me and text me crying. Like, yo, Joe, I know it's just a snap of collab, but yo, you told a crazy story on here, bro, mm-hmm. about, you know, your personal connection of, you know, going to corner stores with $6 and having to buy a $3 t-shirt, but wanting to buy a juice. And like, you know, that was the art negotiation back in, you know, back in the days. And like, yeah. that kind of made me the man I am now trying to, you know, taking, you know, not a lot and making it spread mm-hmm. spread out. So, you know, I just, I, I I really know that, you know, I have a, a chip on my shoulder because it's like I'm doing this for that kid in um, New Orleans or Houston that's mm-hmm. like not in New York. Because it's always been a thing like you got to move to New York, LA to be on. So I'm also like having that whole narrative that I'm like still hometown. Like, because yeah. I get all these tweets every day. Like, I'm going to be the Joe First Goods of, of Iowa. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the Joe First Goods of, you know, that just lets me know that I'm like, I'm doing my job for Chicago. It's just Boy. like I'm, you know. So, um, yeah, I think it keeps me up. That like I'm, I have a like making cool, making cool clothes is is cool, but like and like you know doing making trendy stuff. But it's like I actually have a purpose, mm-hmm. you know. And I think for me, it's just like I can't let that purpose play out, you know, just because just like you know a, a store wants to place a you know you know thirty thousand dollar order or yeah, some yeah. weird shit. That's you know right. I made up number, but you know, <laughs> yeah. So you know what I mean. It's just like I know. I know I have a purpose, you know right. what I'm saying? So I think that that purpose keeps me up at night, knowing that I have to like keep fighting to show that I can do this like my way, you know what I'm saying? I keep shocking people. People would collapse and stuff like that, you know? Word. All right, man. Well, thank you. That was great. Yeah. Good yeah. looking out. Yeah, no problem. Hey, thank you for listening to our final episode of the season with Chicago's pride and joy, Joe Fresh Goods. As always, you can find out more about the show and listen to other episodes at hypebeast.com slash radio. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. I personally use Anchor FM. Also, please, please, please do me a favor and leave a rating and comment to tell me what you think of this show. Also, tell a friend about the show. Spread the word. Everything helps out a lot. We also occasionally answer listener questions on the show. So if you have a question, shoot it over to me on Twitter. I'm at Jeff Staple. The Business of Hype is created in collaboration with Bright Young Things. You can check out their work at byt.nyc. Our director is Daniel Nevetta. Our audio engineer is David Rogers Berry. Our associate producers are Sydney Pacumpera and Christina Hong. This episode was recorded at Sibling Rivalry Studio and on location at the Staple headquarters in New York City. I'm Jeff Staple, and you've been listening to The Business of Hype on Hype Beast Radio.